Hey everybody, how's it going? So today we're going to be getting started fixing an A1708 non-touch bar 2016-17 MacBook Pro. Let's open this thing up and figure out why it's not powering on and see if we can make it work again. All right, so it looks like this takes 5 volts, 260 milliamps, but doesn't seem to want to get up to 20 volts. Let's take the board out of the case and try and figure out why that is. Now on the older MacBooks, there is a such thing as you having a green-orange light in the charger, charger's turning on, or no light in the charger, charger not turning on. The reason I plug this USB-C amp meter in between the charger and the board is the same general principle. 5 volts, charger's not turning on. 20 volts, it is turning on. Ah! Don't forget personal space circles. What personal space? What the fuck is that? <laughs> Seriously? I want to take a MacBook for the biggest douchebag customer and just fill it with self-leveling concrete. I want to do a video titled, We Finally Decided to Use Self-Leveling Concrete, and just dip a customer's machine right in it. Ideally, it would be if what would occur is a YouTube viewer who said, Why not self-leveling concrete send the MacBook in? and we just enc encapsulate it in self-leveling concrete. The A1708 board is uncomfortable to remove from the case because of the Wi-Fi wire area. Let's see, is this an 00875 or a 00840? This is 00840. Let's look up a schematic in a board view. Let's use Paul Daniels' life-changing software over here. Everybody, to say thank you to Paul Daniels for making this amazing software that helps me do my job. Go to youtube.com slash 19PLD73. That's youtube.com slash 19PLD73. And say thank you to Paul Daniels. So over here, this is the PP3V3 underscore G3 hot power supply. Now, many people ask, why am I always so concerned about this rail? Well, that's a great question. This rail that this chip creates goes to this chip over here. So PP3V3 underscore G3 hot is going to power the chip that tells the charger to put out 20 volts rather than putting out 5 volts. So right now my charger is stuck at 5 volts. And if you look over here, voltage in, see that? Goes over here, PP3V3 underscore G3 hot, UPCXA. And PP3V3 underscore G3 hot, UPCXA, comes from PP3V3 underscore G3 hot. So if this chip doesn't create that, then this chip over here, which is the USB-C port controller, USB-C port controller won't turn on, and it won't tell the charger to put out 20 volts rather than 5. Now remember, this USB-C charger, this is a, a universal standard. And I can plug this into a GoPro, a phone, or a MacBook. It, it'll work with everything, but it needs to know how much voltage to put out. And it's going to start by putting out the lowest voltage, and it's not going to up it until it speaks to that. And here's, bitch, I'm a MacBook. I want my 20 volts. But it's not, it's not doing that. So it, it's not going up itself to 20 volts until it speaks to that USB-C port controller. And that USB-C port controller is dead because its power line that's supposed to be producing it is nothing. So let's try and figure out why that's the case. So if we switch over here, you'll see that this chip needs to be getting enable on pin 10 in order to work. So we need it to be enabled. That's what EN stands for. And we also need it to have supply voltage on pin 2. So let's check pin 2. And let's also check pin 10. So pin 10 is barely visible. It's actually really hard to see. But it looks like it goes to this pro point right above it. So I can just check over here. So it looks like the enable is present. So it is being asked to turn on. So now I am, I can potentially blame the chip if it doesn't want to turn on. So now we're going to go to the other points. What are we getting at the supply? Pin 2. Four point six volts. And we have five volts going in. Five volts going in. And that's gonna get lowered a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit by the diode. I also believe there is a, re a zero ohm resistor, R6906. That's a little far up here. Let's see. Is there any voltage drop here? Hello?
Okay, we got. Why are you blinking? That's strange. Five point one three. It's nice and steady. Five point one three. Nice and steady. Four point six. A little bit of voltage drop from the diode. That's, that's fine. Enable pre is present. Output is point three. All right. Now we got to figure out what's pulling it down. Maybe there's a short circuit to ground on the line. Three hundred ninety. Let's see. Point three hundred eighty million ohms. So that's three hundred eighty thousand ohms. So three hundred eighty thousand ohms. That doesn't sound like there's a short circuit bringing it down. However, here's the reason why I think that there is a short circuit, even though my meter is lying to me and telling me there is no short circuit. The reason I think there's a short, even though my meter is telling me that there's no short, is because it's taking three hundred milliamps. When PP3V3 underscore G3 hot is not present, then it's not working. Typically, it takes 10 to 30 milliamps, yet it's taking 10 times that amount of power, which is not what I would expect if there's no short circuit. The short circuit would also explain why it's being pulled down. I believe this board may have what's called an active short, where the short circuit is only present when there's power going through the affected component. So only once the affected component has a charge going through it, does it then wind up opening something that shorts the ground. So we're going to see if that's the case using a thermal camera. So I'm going to use the thermal camera. Let's get that on the desk. But before we get that on the desk, it looks like we have all-out war opening up here in Rossman Repair Group, and we're going to have to take care of that first. Hey, wait, I'm behind! <coughs> I hit the pilot. Oh! I hit the pilot and the drone! Counter-terrorist unit. What the fuck? I hit it! You should be dead! I want to fill up the short circuit with some self-leveling concrete. We should have a self-leveling concrete station at the new place. That looks like a water dispenser. But it dispenses self-leveling concrete. My self-leveling concrete. All right, what's well, taking 300 milliamps? See you Wednesday, or Tuesday. See you later, Paul. Don't forget, four o'clock. Four o'clock in... In New Jersey. What's Jersey? All right, so this resistor's getting warm. That's the inrush resistor, though. Each CD3215 is a cool 27 Celsius. On the other side of the board, we have something getting warm over here. 50 Celsius? Hmm, what is that? I'm going to take my tweezer and try to figure out what that is. All right, now it's right on top of what it is. I'm going to engage English mode in the software. So it's this chip. Now, is that chip really getting to be 50 Celsius? Ah, it seems like it is. Seems like that could be an active short. Well, next thing I'm kind of interested in is what does that chip do? And does PP3V3 underscore G3 hot even go to it? Well, there's only one way to find out now, isn't there? We're going to use Paul Daniels' amazing software, and we're going to click over and one of the things that I find pretty interesting is Paul Daniels software says that that chip doesn't exist. But, am I, am I, really, what? Okay, that's what, that's what the board looks like. The, but the board view says there's nothing there. But, but there's a chip. But the board view says there's nothing there. But there's a chip. But the board view says there's nothing there. But there's a chip at the... Apple, are you gaslighting me? 
Let's replace it. Let's pray that my I have a full donor board for that, not one of those stupid wings. And then... Do you just shoot you in the tailbone? David, that's cruel to shoot somebody in the tailbone like that. Maybe I have an 875 board view that's labeled 00840. Yeah, because the 820-00875 board does not have that chip. What does page one on the schematic say? Oh, uh, the PDF. Page one says X502 MLB, August 9th, 2016. Yeah, maybe they just gave me the wrong board view. The, sch the schematic is correct, but the board view is not. Alright. Well, do we have any 00840 boards there? Or is it all 00875? Oh, beautiful. Fresh from China. Fresh from China. Well, I guess I'm never going to know what this chip is for. Yeah, Piernov just confirmed that the 00875 and 00840 board view is the same file. So most likely, the, we don't have a schematic for this one. We don't have a board view for this even if we have a schematic for it. That's kind of lame. So, I'm not really sure what this thing does. Perhaps this is the spy chip. This is the spy on America chip. I'm kind of curious if you even need that thing. Maybe it's just optional. Paul Daniels is back. Everybody give a nice round of applause to Paul Daniels in the chat for producing this amazing software that helps make my life easier. And to Piranov as well, who assists Paul Daniels with the software. Both talented board repair people and programmers that deserve more credit than they get. And money. A nice welcome and hello to Paul Daniels. Hero of the Republic. Yeah, same. I, I hate that, what they do with the 00138 as well, because there's enough... Uh, try troubleshooting the MVTT enable circuit using any of the other available schematics. It'll drive you nuts, because the transistors are all opposite. They're the other way, so you, act, you have to trace back from the resistors that go to them to fit, and then use the dots in the transistors to figure out which way they're oriented to figure out what it is, because they use the same transistors in the same MVTT enable circuit, just in different spots. Even if it's a coil cluster, what is PP3B3 underscore G3 hot doing going to it? I don't understand. Okay, I'm gonna let the board rapid cool for a moment there. I was using this little box cutter as a heat shield for those two underfilled chips down there. I don't want anything with underfill on it getting heated.
All right, it's taking 40 milliamps, and then it jumps all the way up to 20 volts at 500 milliamps, which means it's turning on. So I, ha I knew that it was going to turn on from the moment I saw it was only taking 40 milliamps rather than 300 because the lower milliamp usage means my short is gone. If my short was still there, then it would have still been taking 300 milliamps from the get-go rather than slowly starting with a small amperage draw and then growing as it does on a typical working board. Again, one of the things I think is important to get across here is that you can still have a short circuit even if you don't measure a short circuit. You can have 300,000 ohms to ground as I did, but still have a short circuit because the way what's going on is that the chip is only having a short circuit when it has power going through it. So once it has power go through it, that causes something to go, some pathway to open up that wouldn't otherwise open up that sends this power rail to ground. And it's something you also can't really measure for because if you try to measure for a short circuit, if you try to use a multimeter to measure the resistance of something with power going through it, it's not going to work. And that's the issue that we were having here. So you can indeed have a short circuit where even if there's a resistance reading of about 300,000 ohms to ground, which is going to confuse a lot of people. The thermal cam showed that that was getting to 54 Celsius, which it's not going to do if there's not a short circuit. PP3V3 underscore G3 hot is not going to be 0.2 volts instead of 3.3 volts without a short circuit if it's creating that much heat. So that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. Give a shout out to Paul Daniels at youtube.com slash 19PLD73. That's youtube.com slash 19PLD73 to say thank you very much for this lovely, beautiful software that helps us do our job. And uh, happy holidays. Merry Christmas. See you in the next one.